Hello everyone and welcome to another Kinetics video. In this video I want to take a look at a real life example which exemplifies why uh, I've added this Kinetics into the program. I figure it could be a very handy thing to do when exploring various types of escapements. So let's take a look at a simple escapement. Down here in MEX you can see there's a drop down box in which you can keep your uh, mechanisms as I think I showed in the last video. I'm going to select Walker Escapement and hit the Import button. We get a message on the screen telling us a mech is loaded and we can paste it. So I'll right click on the screen here and select paste. And here's a walker escapement. Now this was made uh, by simply importing it from Gerotic. I saved a DXF, a shafting DXF, uh, with just those two items on the screen. And uh, then I added a pendulum. Now one thing I did uh, change here is you can see I added a pendulum, but then I took a swipe across it to separate the two shapes. And this is because I knew that the rocker arm, we need to intersect and collide uh, with this escapement gear. But we don't want the pendulum to collide with the escapement gear. It's swinging in front of it. Uh, or at least that's the assumption that we'll make. So to do that, I simply use the clipping tool and put a clip across that uh, joined surface. And then in the properties for the group, the two items are grouped together as two shapes. And if we hit the single group properties, you can see we have two chains in the object. Now one chain, if I select, it says it has five vertices. The other one has 26. Looking at the drawing, we can see it's obvious that this is the one with the 26, the rocker arm. The other one has five. And you can see I've set it to group number one. If we take a look at the escapement wheel, you can see that all of its chains are set to group number one. As an object, it was copied to all with group one. Any two objects that are not zero as a group number and share a group number will not collide. This means that the pendulum arm here, which again is set to group number one, and this uh, escapement gear will no longer collide. But the rocker arm shape up here will collide. So the object here was to make this operate as a walker escapement uh, and to see how well we could make it tick. Now, I didn't want to put a weight or uh, a spring in there. It seemed a bit complex since what I want to do is simulate it. I put a motor on the uh, project. Here on this escapement gear, I added a motor. And if we go into kinematics, we can, after selecting the gear, click on the motor button to see what we have it set to. And I have it set to a maximum force of 15. And I have it set to go backwards as at a fairly quick rate. But with such low power, uh, that means it would operate pretty much as if you had a weight wheel on it. A weight wheel would make the RPM shoot very high if there was nothing to hold it back. So I set it for a negative speed to make it go, go in the proper direction. And uh, I set it as a high speed. Now the maximum force isn't much. It's We'll call it Newtons here, but it's actually a unitless value that I'm using in order to try to make imperial and metric work as closely as possible. Uh, that means if you import something as a metric user or as an inch user, they'll automatically convert and be able to use the same force number. So we're just going to call these Newtons, although it's uh, really a wrong term for it. I'm not going to refer to it as Newton meters or Newton pounds, just purely Newtons, and it's only a relative number. If we can make this escapement tick uh, with a maximum force of, say, 10 Newtons, as we'll call it, uh, but we can't make it tick with anything lower, then we'll have a relative number of what it takes to make this walker tick. From that point forward, if you make any changes to the shape of this walker, you may be able to increase or decrease that efficiency, and you'll be able to measure it by changing the value of that motor force. Let's hit run and watch this walker run. I've been amazed at how much this duplicates what you actually see if you're in your workshop. Uh, trying to make something tick. If you were to suddenly turn on your weight or add weight to this wheel, this is what you'd get, pretty much a locked up clock. But if we grab the pendulum, and I can grab it by clicking it and pull it sideways and let it go, that's pretty much what you do in your workshop to set your clock spinning. And as you can see here, the 10 I entered may be enough to allow this to tick or it may not. The pendulum at this point is trying to stop. Gravity is trying to slow it down, damping and friction. Um, but energy is being added to the pendulum through the interactions here of the pallets as the teeth press on the uh, swing arms. Also, on the other side, when the, uh, when the wheel tries to push on it, it adds uh, energy in the opposite swing. 
So it looks like we can operate this with a force of 10. It appears to tick all right, but if we lower the power on that motor one more step, let me just select motor and take this down to, say, 5. Can we make it tick at 5? I'm going to hit stop and then start and give it a pull and see if we can make a tick on a lower energy. When you find the lowest energy that you can possibly use to make your escapement tick, you can use that as a reference point to judge its efficiency against any changes you might want to make. If, for example, you were to change the angles of these pallets, you'll find that you would need more energy or less energy from the motor that you put onto that wheel. That's a good measure of, of whether or not the changes you've made have made it more efficient or less efficient. It's also a good way to compare escapement types. If you were to put a grasshopper beside this and you find that you can run the grasshopper at a value of three where the other one needs five, uh, you'll know maybe which project you might want to tackle as one's easier to drive than the other one. Uh, you can see that the five we put onto this one resulted in this thing locking up and I got to tell you that's almost exactly what it would do in my workshop. You'd have to give it a pull and set it going. And uh, were I building this, I would undoubtedly at that point add a little bit of weight to it. And in this case, of course, we just add a little bit of weight to it uh, by taking it up in force. So we'll take it up to the seven Newtons, hit stop, then start, and we can give it another shot. That's the nice thing about this simulator is that you actually know that if it ticks, it's ticking because of the laws of physics, not because of some arbit arbitrary uh, computer code that I put into Garotic to tell things how they relate to each other. That makes it a very interesting way to simulate devices. Now you'll notice that the period of this thing is about one second on either side of the uh, uh, of a cycle and that's proper for a three-foot pendulum. The math is not exact because I've taken some liberties to make sure that you're not uh, easily locking things up. When you set an offset if I stop this and you set your ma your gravity center of gravity offset, you're actually setting an additional mass at the end of that length. It brings you very close to the physics for what you'd expect for a time of swing, but it's not exact. So I wouldn't base anything on the time of swing, although it will be close. But it is fair to say that you can use relative powers to drive uh, devices to measure their efficiency or to compare the uh, energy required to drive a given device. One important thing to consider there is you should stick with a type of material if you're going to compare devices. You'll notice here in the settings that you can select various materials from plywood all the way to steel. All these things will affect the mass of the object and therefore affect the uh, moment of inertia of the object, which we'll deal with in another video. Um, the inertial component of each piece that you're putting on can impact exactly how they're going to react and how energy is going to transfer between things. So if you're used to building things out of plywood, I'd stick with plywood for now until you have a greater understanding of exactly uh, how the inertial components change between various types of material. Anyway, that's good for uh, the uh, example of a walker escapement. I would highly recommend you load it, play with it, and uh, see how it reacts on your system and how much power perhaps it takes to get it to swing. Uh, it's an interesting experiment to run. Have fun. There will be more videos on some of the toys that uh, I've added, and we'll talk about those soon.